I've been talking about this and talking about this. Let's get into reading some labels, shall we? I'm Genuine Nard, and this is everything I've learned about growing my natural type 4 hair. Please subscribe, like, share, comment, and thanks. Ooh, it's the dog days of summer, and to make sure that I'm comfortable, I made sure with my cotton, I wear my hair off of my shoulders in a nice, light and easy twist. So I didn't cut my hair, it's just shrank. And the next thing is I want to get into why I chose to do the reading labels video before my shampoo and conditioner videos. You know, shampoo and conditioners are two of the most prevalent hair care products on the market. And in the black community, we spend more on hair care products than any other community. And yet we don't seem to have the same growth gains for our investments, right? So I wanted to talk about what's in shampoo and some of the things that are in most store-bought shampoos that might be doing you more harm than good. So let's get into it. I always say, don't get hooked by the front of the bottle. Turn it around and see what's in it. Every single hair care product has to list their ingredients online, and you can look this all up. So before I go to the beauty supply store, I Google it. What are these ingredients? You can find out what they are and what they do to your hair before you make a decision so that you are shopping like a pro. So let's look at some of these ingredients. Of course, I don't know what any of them mean, including the fragrance. But what is this one? Sodium chloride. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to Google it. It is some form of salt. Actually, it's some form of chlorinated salt. I love this organization, the Environmental Working Group, or EWG.org. So in their Skin Deep series, they go through every single ingredient in every single beauty product. They break it down, whether it's skin or hair or makeup, and they let you know on a rating system, how safe is this ingredient? It is eye-opening to find out what are they putting in our products and how safe are they? This is if it's a carcinogen, this if it's reproductive toxicity, and this one is if it's an allergen. So we're going to read this label together, but if you'd like to play a little game, go get your favorite store-bought shampoo and let's compare and see what's in it. Unlike food, the FDA does not regulate cosmetics. So a food label has to say what percentage of each ingredient is there. Shampoos don't have to reveal the percentages used in each ingredient. However, they have to list them on the label. Usually it's from the most prevalent down to the smallest amount. If it has at least 1% of an ingredient, it has to be listed. So let's see what's in this shampoo. What's listed first on your shampoo? I bet it's water. Most shampoos are 80% water. Why so much water? Because water is cheap and they can get volume for less money by packing it full of water. The next thing that'll jump out at you is the amount of salt in your shampoo. Most shampoos use some type of sodium or sulfate in their ingredients list. If it has the IUM or sulfate or sodium in it, those are all different types of salt. Next are foaming agents. That's what gives you all of that lather. Next set of ingredients are moisturizers, right? So after you've taken all the oil out of your hair, you have to add it back in. And this one does seem to have several different natural moisturizers in it. So the next set of ingredients are thickening agents and they make it opaque so that it doesn't look like water. And then all of the ingredients that end in the ATE 
Those ingredients are usually sequestering agents, which means they are making the other chemicals more stable um, in the shampoo. These next three are very common in black hair care products. They are your glossers and your coatings. They make your cuticle layer lay down after a process so that your hair will be shinier and it will appear healthier. Next is going to be some type of citric acid. Um, some shampoos will skip this, but usually black hair care products lines do not. And it's really to balance your pH. It's a good thing to see in a shampoo. Before I buy a shampoo, which I don't anymore, but I would definitely make sure it had some of these uh, vitamin C boost in it. The next group is your preservatives. You have to preserve all of these different ingredients so that they will have a longer shelf life. So they have at least 1% of each of these different preservatives. And then lastly are any special additives. It's usually food dye, um, which is yellow six and red four, generally perceived to be harmless. So what's really in most shampoos is a lot of salt. That's what these are. A lot of alcohol, which is usually some version of isopropyl alcohol. <laughs> a few moisturizers. Now we don't know the quality of these oils, but it's good to have them in there. Quite a few of these stabilizers so that this is going to be shelf stable a ton of preservatives, and some dye. Okay, so that was an overview of the basic ingredients that are in almost every shampoo on the market. There's going to be some kind of detergent. There's going to be a couple of foaming agents. There's going to hopefully be emulsifiers and some conditioners and some moisturizers. There should be a citric or an acid element. There's going to be some stabilizers, some um, opaque fires, right? Uh, some thickeners and then a whole ton of preservatives. That's pretty much any shampoo anywhere on the planet. So to the degree that they add great conditioners, great moisturizers, those shampoos are going to be pretty good. I don't like to use certain ingredients and I'm going to dig into these ingredients a little bit more in this next segment. So let's go way deep. Let's look at this shampoo's synthetic detergent or surfactant, sodium laureth sulfate. This is problematic because it is so good at stripping all oil, it's used as an engine degreaser and a laundry detergent. And while there are no direct evidence suggesting that SLS or SLES cause cancer, infertility, or development issues, these detergents are still suspect because we now understand the chemicals slowly build up in your body with continued use. And sometimes they are contaminated during manufacturing with a chemical 1-4-dioxane, which is a possible carcinogen to humans, according to the EPA. Now, the FDA does recommend manufacturers remove 1-4-dioxane, but it is not required by law. It's also costly and difficult to remove this chemical. So we would be wise to assume most manufacturers don't bother since they don't have to. Next is cocomitopropyl betaine. It's a synthetic detergent used as a foaming agent. In 2004, this chemical was named Allergen of the Year by the American Contact Dermatitis Society. Researchers pushed back, stating that the actual impurities emerging during manufacturing are what's causing the irritation to eyes and skin. But this chemical is still hotly debated. Let's look at the next ingredient, Kokomite DIPA, another foaming agent. DIPA manufacturers state it has lower salt levels over traditional amides. But because it's not regulated, we don't know how much lower. Any ingredient that contain amides. On the label, it can be cocomitopropyl betaine, or it can be thresanoamide or cocomide, DEA or MEA. I'm sure I'm not saying these right. But these ingredients are contaminated by nitrosamides. That's a chemical known to have cancer causing risk to humans. Now, to be fair, if you eat a diet 
high in antioxidants and vitamin C, you can reduce the conversion of nitrates to nitrosamides in your diet. You know what else can reduce that risk if you skip these synthetic detergents? And when I was researching this, the thing that upset me the most is that these chemicals don't make your shampoo work any better. Foaming agents lather in hard water. So this will give you the lather you expect from shampoo. What does parfum really mean? <laughs> Manufacturers don't want your chemicals to smell like chemicals, so they cover it with some generic, heavy, synthetic fragrance and ethyl alcohol. According to the Food and Drug Administration, ethyl alcohol can have a drying effect on skin and hair. And we can't know how much of this mystery ingredient is in the product, but we can assume it's a lot because look at where it's placed on the list. Remember, we're reading from the most prevalent to 1%. Parfum is way up top. The next ingredients are emollients, lubricants, and moisturizers. You ever wonder why companies list all the ingredients using their chemical name and then add the common name in parentheses? Because it causes confusion and it blurs the lines between synthetic chemical ingredients and natural ones. And this brand is doing better than most because it does use some botanical ingredients. Now let's look at these glossers. These are common in African American hair care products because they make your hair shine and more manageable. Polychordinum, much like a fabric softener, deposits a fatty conditioner fighting static. These polymers are great on highly exposed hair to alkaline relaxers, decreasing the damage. They have adhesive properties that attach to the hair and they're water soluble. The environmental working group does state that it's mostly safe. The next one is amodimethicone. This is a liquid silicone that is an amide, A-M-I-D-E. It's modified to stick to your hair better. So much better that the cuticle of your hair is not allowed to take in water as easily as it needs to, creating a low porosity. This ingredient, ending in C-O-N-E, is a silicone, and it looks great on the hair for a short term, but silicones tend to build up and cause damage to the hair. Now the next one is glycerin. It is derived from plant seed oils. It is pure and non-toxic. Let's look now at glycosterate and glycodisterate. These two chemicals are what makes shampoo thick and pearly, so it doesn't look like it's 80% water. They're considered safe in small amounts. Scientists have tested this product with the 2 to 5% used in shampoo, and these ingredients don't cause eye or skin irritation. Isosterol ethylimosium ethyl sulfate, <laughs> say that three times fast, it is a blend used by this brand. It's some type of fatty alcohol used as an anti-static surfactant. Next is the acid ingredients. I would not buy a shampoo that did not have some type of acid ingredient. Either it's sodium citrate or citric acid or some type of shampoo pH balancer. These interact with the hair's slightly negative charge to help the cuticle, the outer layer of your hair, maintain a smooth, flat surface. The rest of these are all preservatives. The propylene glycol is in most carbonated beverages. It inhibits bacterial growth and it evenly distributes fatty acids. This shampoo has methaparaben and ethylparaben. These are used as antifungal preservatives. Now they're dangerous because they're endocrine disruptors. On the label, they'll have some type of P-A-R-A-P-E-N um, and they can also be B-H-A, B-H-T, pulsotherolite and trisplin. Some of these are referred to as hormonal active agents, but they disrupt your endocrine system causing cancerous tumors, birth defects, and other developmental and reproductive disorders. Last are the dyes. Red 4 is a synthetic dye produced from petroleum and it's considered to be safe. However, yellow 6 has been proven to cause cancer in lab animals. 
and it's been long known to cause allergic reaction in many people. However, they do look pretty. When I was doing the research for this video, I was really shocked. Years ago, Essence Magazine did an expose article that was brilliantly written about some of the damaging chemicals that are in hair care products. And they're still there years later. And from a manufacturer's standpoint, why would they change? No one is complaining. They're making tons of money. So they're not regulated. So why would they make any changes? So until we decide we are not going to spend money on companies or products that do not care for and cater to our communities and our hair, don't expect changes. Um, wh why would they? So, and that's it. That is why I make my own shampoo now. And next week I'll show you exactly what's in my shampoo and then how to shampoo your hair for the very best benefit. And I hope that you have subscribed. If you have subscribed already, I hope you feel like you have a friend on the internet and that we are on this hair growth journey together. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to the tribe. I promise you that I'm going to give you the very best information that I can research at any given time. And when I know better, I will do better. And thanks again for watching. Click like if you like it. Comment and let me know who you are. And have a great rest of your day. Bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this one. Tell me how it turned out for you in the comments. Click like. Subscribe and ring that bell for all the videos in this playlist. Or just view these next two. And thank you again for watching. Alright, that's it. <laughs>